things have been canceled this year. And I am not alone in that by a long shot. I've already read Brittany Keezer's Ministry Minute, and she has her own stories to share about things of importance that have been canceled. People have had to cancel weddings and family gatherings. They've had to cancel holding loved ones. They've had to cancel being with grandchildren. Jobs have been canceled. Funerals postponed. Sometimes even life itself has been canceled as COVID has been on a rampage. But then I caught my breath. And when I caught my breath, I called something of the Spirit of God breathing into me, telling me, you know what? God has not been canceled. And so I wondered what else has not been canceled in the lives of people. So on Facebook, I asked folks to send me all the things that haven't been canceled. This is what they sent me. All has not been canceled. Wonder has not been canceled. Neither has faith. God's love has not been canceled. Puppy love has not been canceled. I didn't write any of these, but I would have. For the Paschal family, y'all didn't write this, but someone else did. Cat lap time has not been canceled. God's grace has not been canceled. Unfortunately, homeless animals in need of shelter have not been canceled. Good stuff. Reading has not been canceled. has not been canceled. New grandchildren have not been canceled. Friends have not been canceled. Your creativity has not been canceled. My appetite has not been canceled. Not everything could fit on a card, but I think that gives you a sense of what people were sharing with me. Let me uh, give you some other things that couldn't fit on just one card. Someone wrote, The Love of Family. But she went on to say, several times during this pandemic, my fears have surfaced to a level I don't like. Being strong can be exhausting. Talking with my grown daughter is so comforting. She's an amazing friend as well as an awesome daughter. She is my rock. This one is going to be given away of the author. Bill got to work from home and we've never been together for more than two weeks ever. So I have loved having him home. I've been able to, out, to be outdoors to exercise every day and walk the dogs. We've traveled carefully and explored the great Western USA. But every morning when I woke up, I thank God for another day. And I always ask, please use me today how you need me. And every day he has shown me 
if it was sewing masks, repairing pants, and putting in zippers for new prosthesis, or subbing at Martinez Elementary to keep up with our reading buddies. These have not been canceled. From a newlywed, quality time with my family, which is one of the positives from the pandemic for me, no hustle and bustle. We didn't even do online karate. We just stopped running somewhere all the time and we helped with homework, had dinners together, movie nights, etc. We just focused on us as a family and, unlike most others, my wedding wasn't canceled. And she goes, woohoo. We give thanks for that. And I had actually made this poster and somehow it didn't make in um, another person present of things that haven't been canceled. Robert hasn't been canceled. The love of wife for husband has not been canceled. I pray that by sharing these non-cancellations with you, if there is such a word, that this will begin to prime the pump for you. And I pray that it will help you to meditate just where God has been during this long COVID tide. And the reason I went with the word, what ha or the phrase, what hasn't been canceled, is I, help, I believe it helps us focus. If I asked just for gratitude, I was afraid we wouldn't go deep enough. You all went deep, and I give thanks for that. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the church year, so if you wanted 2020 to end early, this is it. Next Sunday is First Advent, and it begins a new year. But for this to be Christ the King Sunday, it's a good reminder that Jesus is still sovereign in good times and in bad times. Jesus is Lord. So when you go home today, write up your own list of things that can endure, things that have endured, things that have not been canceled, and then give thanks to God the giver who makes all those things possible. In Jesus' name, amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. 
for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim in the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those in need of healing, Dan Patasio, Terry Wood, Robbie Gerald, Nanette Johnson, Michael Thomas, Carolyn Schmidt, Michelle Francisco, Joan Jackson, and Aiden Brooks. For those who are homebound, for the safety of those who serve abroad, for Abby Brooks as she completes basic training for the Navy, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for those celebrating birthdays, Miles Green, for those celebrating anniversaries, John and Lori Morgan, for our partnership with Martinez Elementary School and the Claiborne at Westlake. We exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, including those who have died of COVID-19 this past week, and that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray for you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you, newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Be seated. As I mentioned at the start of the service, this is Celebration Sunday. It's the conclusion of our stewardship campaign. And this is the time in which we are asking everybody, if you um, haven't done so yet, please return your pledge cards, and that will be of help to us in planning for 2021, which is going to be so much better than 2020. Uh, and, and I am delighted uh, to welcome back Brittany Kieser, um, a Georgia freshman. I haven't seen you in such a long time. And she is going to give our ministry minute. Thank you. Why don't you get right over there? Thank you, love. Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm Brittany. Um, I am a UGA freshman. Um, okay. So here's my little speech um, okay so as you may have guessed I didn't particularly choose Holy Comforter which isn't a bad thing <laughs> don't be scared <laughs> um, I was born and raised an Episcopalian and attended St. Augustine's over on Wheeler Road where I was um, baptized until about the fifth grade around the fifth grade my mom and older sister started looking for another church in particular one with more kids my age <laughs> Um, a majority of my mornings in Sunday school were spent with me and the pastor's wife by ourselves. Um, every now and then we would have a few other people my age, but for the most part it was just the two of us. 
Uh, my sister was a youth pastor there for a while when I was little, and a good youth program was their top priority for our new home. Um, we started Holy Comforter not long after our search began, and I remember sitting in the rooms downstairs that had yet to be renovated, not once, but twice, and um, staying for a Sunday school lesson. Soon I met three other girls in the same grade as me, and we seemed to do almost everything together. I was invited to birthday sleepovers. We went to Cornerstone every month, North Carolina for a zip lining trip. I became an acolyte. I met some pretty cool people who happened to go to my school and live in my neighborhood. And suddenly, this is my new reality. Uh, my mom is a nurse who works overnight, but somehow I'm still here almost every single Sunday. And even after I got my license, you could almost count on me being here all the time. <laughs> um, I also almost never missed a youth group because that was a big priority. Um, so I didn't necessarily pick Holy Comforter as my forever home, but it most definitely felt like it picked me. I would say um, I became relatively involved in the community here until COVID came <laughs> in March. Um, I was a senior in high school, headed to UGA this fall. Um, everything that was my reality felt like it came crumbling down, as I'm sure it did for almost everybody else. Um, more family members died as the months went on. Um, a few even had COVID. More things were put on hold or canceled. All of my high school lasts were gone. Um, oh gosh, that's so bad. Um, I worked 30 to 40 hours every single week at Chick-fil-A. I graduated through a drive through right outside of our school's front steps. My world was absolutely turned upside down. Um, there are a lot of unknowns for me, especially for the future that I had planned. Um, the biggest role I believe that the church played in all of it, um, I said in my pandemic playbook, um, was preparing me for something I never knew was coming. This may or may not make a lot of sense, but I always I was I used my faith and my and you know watching online to create a sense of normalcy to get through this incredible piece of history we lived and are still living. I was able to see the light at the end of the tunnel when things didn't go the way I necessarily, necessarily planned. I may not have been able to walk across the stage, go to my senior prom, learn inside of a classroom, or experience a somewhat normal freshman year, but um, it did come with its fair share of benefits. I was able to get my diploma, I got closer to some of my best friends, and in some incredible way, I was able to see my own community and those around me connect and work together in new ways. I will continue to attend Holy Comforter for the people, the atmosphere, and the sense of community. You could go to any Episcopal church and receive an almost verbatim lesson, but you can't find this kind of love, people, and community that you can find here. Thank you so much, Brittany. And I'm so sorry so much got canceled for you, but I am so glad to see you and so glad to have you with us today. Please stand for the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. My beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the rich and abundant blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.